This player... Oh, hang on. He doesn't want the puck. Oh, he picked the four. Wow, his hand is actually coming together. I cannot believe it. Okay. Wow. Is he actually in Tenpai? Holy shnike. He's actually in Tenpai. Everything is indeed coming up normal. We have three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a pair, and if we discard the seven, we're waiting for three and six. That's a melt, that's a melt, that's a melt. This is waiting, and this is a pair. I am rather surprised that his hand made a turnaround like this. Um, it's a two-sided wait, he has a Dora. There's the, the only potential reason he might... Well, well, several potential reasons why he might not want to de uh, declare reach. Um, but for, only considering his hand, he might want to... No, actually, he, he will not want to wait to shuffle in a six here. Because if he discards the nine and shuffles in a six here, he has four, five, six, seven, eight, which is waiting for three, six, and nine. Now, that's a three-sided wait, but he's already discarded the, the nine at this point. And now let's talk about Furitan, because this is a good uh, moment to talk about Furitan. Once you are in reach, you cannot win on any tile that you have discarded. Right? So let's assume for a moment... Right, I have to remember to give this back. This is a, a Bamboo 6 from the, uh, from, the west, uh, from, from the East player. Let's assume for a moment that we are in this situation. This has been discarded, and this has been discarded. Now this has been discarded, and now this is discarded. With reach. Right? So we have a closed hand, we promise not to change our hand again, and we are now waiting for 3, 6, and 9, right? We're waiting for 3 and 6, and 6 and 9. However, we already um, declined the 9 by discarding it ourselves. So we cannot win on that 9 anymore. That also means, and this is one of the two mean things about Furi 10, we cannot win on the 3 or the 6 either. Once we are Furi 10 on one piece, we are Furi 10 on all pieces. And by winning, I mean taking it from someone else. He can still try to pick it himself and win like that. But he cannot call it as a winning tile from anyone else anymore. Not the 9, because that's the one he discarded. And not the 3 and the 6, because he discarded the 9. Right? Yeah, it's. it doesn't seem to make sense. But the moment you give up something that may complete your hand, you give up the right to take it from anyone else. To take anything from anyone else. If you are in reach. Only if you are in reach. That's the Furi 10 rules for reach. Well, one of them. The other Furi 10 rule for reach is... After the reach, let's say someone... discards a bamboo 6. This player over here, sorry. This player discards a bamboo six. And this player misses it. Misses to call the win on that tile. All right. Um, we are now in, sorry. We're now in this situation. Uh, we have this. This was our reach. We are not in 4 10 And we are waiting on three and six. We have declared reach. This player has discarded the six. And we did not take it. So we declined, once again, one of our weights. At that moment, we are forever blocked. We are not allowed, if we don't run on this one, if we don't declare a win on this one, that means we are not allowed to declare run on anyone else, right? If next he discards uh, a three, you cannot call that because you are in Furi 10. Once you're in Furi 10 in reach, it's over. You're not, um, so it's, it, uh, it serves to ensure you win in the most direct manner instead of targeting... Yes, exactly. You cannot target a specific player once you are in reach. Right? Um, 
You might you might have overlooked that he has discarded it, or you might think, ah, but it makes more sense for me to uh, win on that player, right? If you're not in reach, that's almost fine. Uh, in this case, it would be fine. But if you are in reach, you cannot specifically target individual people. Right? So once you decline a piece, you are forever locked on all pieces for declaring wrong. Alright, let's put this six back into this hand, put this six back into this hand, and this seven back into this hand. Alright. Further questions about Furitan in reach. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the, the problem is, if you want to play uh, on any client whatsoever, you really need to understand the Furiten rule. Because if you don't understand the Furiten rule, you will inevitably run into a situation where you want to, when you're going to say, Ha! I win! And then, no, you don't. You cannot declare on on that piece because you're in Furiten. And then, what is Furiten? So, do not worry. It will be the fu <laughs> Not the furry tan. Oh, the furry tan. The furry tan. Um, uh, 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 uh. So, but furry tan also has a, a an, an advantage. Well, not for the player in reach, but for the other players. Remember how earlier I talked about what, what safe tiles are and like how the two tiles next to it are are dangerous? Um, if you were to discard this 9, well, no, 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 actually, if you were to have discarded a 6 and are, oh god, no, no, let's, let's not get into that, sorry, but we've, we've had an example over there before why something is a trap, and you can usually rule out the three apart pieces. So if a four is discarded, you can rule out the one and the seven. If a two is, dis uh, is a five is discarded, you can rule out the two and the eight. If a six is discarded, you can rule out the three and the nine. Because of those, because they are three apart. Because if you have a three-sided weight and you're waiting on the nine, then you're also waiting on the six, right? But if you are fully 10 on one of those tiles, then you're fully 10 on the other. So if he has discarded a six, he cannot be waiting on 6 and 9, and therefore cannot be waiting on 9. Because if he is waiting on 9, he's most likely also on 6, but he's, if he's fully turned on 6, so he's fully turned on 9. That makes sense, right? Sorry if that was too fast. But um, that's the gist of it. That's why uh, this rule of 3, and therefore 3-2, yes, from the 6. If the 6 is discarded, 3 and 9 are safe most of the time. But uh, remember over here, the 4 is discarded, so technically, one and seven are safe, but actually it's a weight on the seven, right? So that's why in this case it was a trap. A mean, mean trap. All right, so we've all agreed. We will discard the nine, we'll declare reach, and we uh, sacrifice our 1,000 points. Now, there is a very specific reason why the seven piece here is, is turned, because we need to know exactly when he declared reach. Because everything that he discards afterwards is of course a safe tile that doesn't complete his hand. But also, everything everyone else discards after that is a safe tile. Because he didn't take it. He would be fully 10 on those if it was something like that. Right? So that is why it's very important to keep track of where, um, at what point uh, the player declared reach. Alright, so this player is waiting on 3 and 6. Let's keep that in mind. And build that wall. Uh, uh, close that hand. Because really, we don't even need to know what's happening there. Okay. He declares reach, and that is the moment we've all been waiting for. Oh man, I've been waiting for that for like over an hour now. <laughs> One second, I can close this, and I can open this, 
And because in the Janjumon, in the in the in the original client, there is a specific music the moment someone declares reach, and that's this one. <laughs> okay. So he is in reach, there is danger on the table. The four eaten rule too. What is the four eaten rule? I still like my version of the four eaten rule. You must pass the biscuits round after you take your four. <laughs> I like the four eaten rule. You die here in March on edition. Alright. Now we have to be careful. We have to clearly analyze right now. From an outside perspective, what does this hand look like? First of all, there is a sequence of only terminals and honors that have been discarded. So if I don't know anything about his hand, there is a decent indication that he's going for Tanyao, for all symbols. Therefore, the pieces at every terminal and honor is kind of safe. Everything he has discarded is definitely safe. And everything 2 to 8 becomes a bit more dangerous. It doesn't have to be uh, symbols and honors. And in, in reality it isn't, right? Remember he has a 9. Um, Look like a bunch of Lego bricks. I know. And uh, so that's the first indication that we have. Now, what else could be dangerous? The seven has been discarded, so we know that the two pieces next to the seven, uh, or the four pieces directly next to the seven, are most dangerous. That is, the five, the six, the eight, and the nine. Except for the nine, because the nine he discarded himself. So we definitely want to avoid discarding the 5, the 6, and the 8. That argument kind of still holds for this bamboo 2, but is a bit weaker. So, kind of dangerous are the bamboo 1, 3, and 4. But not as dangerous. Why the 8? Right. So, the 2 pieces directly, or the 4 pieces directly next to the 7, if the 7 is in the middle, Right, my head is the seven. Then let me just see from right to left. That is uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these four pieces are the most dangerous ones. So five, six, eight, and nine are the dangerous ones. But the nine is safe because it's already been discarded. So really, only five, six, and eight. He could have an eight and looking for a double. Oh no, it's for the reasons. Um, we, we, we had it open earlier, where, remember earlier when he had, um, let me just recreate that, hang on, uh, let me just recreate that situation, where he had this, oh sorry, 2458, right? In 2458, what he can't use is the 2 and the 8, right? So, if one after another he discards the 2 and the 8, he is waiting for the 3 and the 6. So, right next to the 8... No, let's start here. Right next to the 2 is the 3. And so, discarding the 2 clearly signifies that the 3 is dangerous. Because it is true in this case, right? The reason for discarding the two is that you have four in a sequence with the three missing. So therefore, discarding the two signifies that the one next to it, the three, is dangerous. So the two tiles immediately next to the tile you discarded are dangerous. And the same logic applies for four, five, and eight. In four, five, and eight, you discarded the eight because you don't need it. And the 6, which is 2 away from the 8, is dangerous, right? You can see clearly if you discard the 8 and you're waiting for the 3 and the 6. So, the 2 tiles directly next to the discarded tile are dangerous, and the 2 tiles 2 over are dangerous. And because of the 4010 rule, the tiles 3 away are very safe. They're not 100% safe, but fairly safe. We saw that, how that how that logic breaks down when there's a trap. Right, so immediately next and two away are the super dangerous ones. 
And um, I know this was here, this was here, this was in the hand. So that is why, starting from this piece, the seven, the immediately dangerous ones are the five and six, the eight and the nine. But the nine is safe for four or ten reasons. And then if we go back in time, we can repeat that argument for this bamboo too. Where the uh, unsafe tiles are the one, the three, and the four in bamboo. But that, the further, and the further you step back in time, the weaker that argument gets. Because somewhere around here, this was all just part of the start game. This has nothing to do with the final pattern of the hand. Whereas for the last three tiles, it does still have some sort of significance. And in fact, it's true, right? We are in fact waiting for three and six. And one of our rules was that the one directly next to the two, which is the three, is dangerous. So it, there is some merit to that. Thing. So that's why these, these tiles are unsafe. In summary, the things you discard say things about the things you still need. Correct. Uh, I know from other games that you build intuition about this stuff the more you play. Correct. Okay, so it's our turn. Have we picked already? We have not. So, we saw the seven. Ooh. Um, ooh, interesting. So, um, there is one more Yaku that I'd like to explain. Now, this Yaku is identified as a Yaku, but it doesn't really make sense. Because you might as well call it a Han. Uh, just a... Um, because it requires reach. This Ipatsu, what it's called, only works if you already have reach. So you already have a winning condition, so why make it another winning condition? But it is definitely another multiplier. If you win within the first four tiles of your reach declaration, the value of your hand gets doubled again. That's called Ipatsu. All right. So, if right now, after the reach discard, the east, south, or west player discards the winning tile, or is it Yakisoba? Or he, dis uh, he picks it himself, it's a Patsu. So, the immediate self pick, uh, or the immediate win, um, doubles the value of your hand again. With one exception, and that is. Ah, uh, not quite. If another pl per person declares reach, they are both waiting for a Patsu. They are both eligible for a Patsu. However, if someone were to make a call, like Chi, or Pon, or Kan, then the Patsu falls apart. And on that topic, I'll actually go into the final Furi Ten. Let's assume... Right, so, we have six and, six and eight, right? And we need a seven. So we will definitely call this as a sequence, because we have started calling our sequences together. So what we'll do is we'll call Chi. Uh, we, we, we will call Chi. We open this, put it to the side, and now we can see we need to put the seven actually to the side, and it's seven, six, eight. Doesn't really matter. Important is that it's coming from the left. And any call breaks uh, breaks Ipatsu. So now he is no longer eligible for that within the first round win. And that is why sometimes you might be tempted to call a Chi even though you really don't need one. Let's say, for example, just as an example, I have uh, I need to remember that this five comes from here. Let's imagine that I have two, three, four in my hand, and I see he discarded a five. Now as a reach time, right? What I really want to do is make sure that I don't deal into Ipatsu. If I deal into his hand, 
Let's at least risk, uh, minimize the damage it, d it does and call just for the sake of it. And so I can call the five with G to three, four, five, and then have the two and discard the two. Wait, that's actually not full time. Uh, but never mind, it is not allowed. That is forbidden. And the reason it is forbidden is because that is an easy way of avoiding Ipatsu. It's an Ipatsu stopper. So that is why whenever you call a sequence, uh, sorry, whenever you call a sequence, you are not allowed to discard another tile that would complete the sequence. So, if you call the five for the sequence of three, four, five, you are not allowed to discard a two or a five, right? It's fairly reasonable to assume that you actually... Hang on. Um, where was this two? Oh, this two was part of that. Um, it's... Actually... Right? It's possible that you have two, three, four, and you say, Ah, I really want to defeat this Ipatsu. I'm calling this as a sequence, two, three, four, and then I'll discard the three. That is also not allowed because it completes this sequence. So let's put this back into order. This 234 was called. This 3 was in our hand. The 5 was from over there. And we have just uh, picked up the 7. Okay, we'll go into the uh, last Fury 10 rule in a moment. But for now, that is what has happened. He declared reach. And we called it as a cheat. And now we need to discard. Six would com wouldn't complete the three four sequence, so it wouldn't come up. Correct. We could uh, we could have discarded the six at this point. Now, uh, we still need to discard something, and we appear to have a problem because now we have a pair, but we now have these sequences. 2, 3, 4, uh, three, four, which waits on 2 and 5, 6, 7, which waits on 5 and 8, and we have this, 5, 6, which waits on uh, uh, 4 and 7. Now, let us quickly reconsider what tiles we have, dis we have deemed absolutely troublesome. Absolutely troublesome, everything connected to the 7. So 6, 8, 5, and 9, but not the 9. So, but we don't have any of these, so we don't have to worry about that. Next, if we go one step back, the two. So we really, if possible, want to avoid a three, a four, or a one. Which we also don't have. And... The eight. So we want to avoid discarding a six, a seven, or a nine. We have a six and a seven. So we don't want to discard the six and the seven. These two, these four, from our perspective, look relatively safe. So, let's go for the outs. For the five and the six, in order to get that completed, we need to get a four or a seven. There is one visible four in this discard. There is one visible four in this discard. There is no other visible fours or sevens of bamboo here. So we have two outs that are missing. For three and four, we're waiting on two and five. There is one two in our uh, in our uh, opened hand. There is two fives up here. So there is three outs missing. Right? So it is less likely for this sequence to be completed than for this sequence to be completed. It is also... There is two eights here. And... Oh, right. This also waits for five and eight. So we have two eights and two fives. So it is very, very unlikely that this sequence is going to be completed. But this is also very dangerous because of the eight discard over there. So if anything, we want to discard the three or the four. <sighs> right. The question is which one? 
So we, we have agreed we want to keep all of this. We want to keep... Um, we want to keep all of the stuff down here. We just need to pick whether to discard the three or the four. Let me think. <laughs> the three or the four. The four is most central so is most likely to be connected to anything else, right? Four is more in the center. My, my bet is on four. Yes, I think so too. Four is more central. Three is less central. There is not much else. So, just from that, from that point of view, Wait, actually the 4 is more central, so the 4 can be more useful to other people. So we maybe want to keep the 4 and throw the 3 first. Uh, do you have an argument for the 4, Bredo, now? I don't really see much one way or another. West discarded one, so he doesn't want three, so he want, might want four. Um, West discarded one. Uh, by the West discarded one argument, he might... He, the other way around. He doesn't want four, he might want three, right? Because he's already discarded one. Oh, that's what you mean. Well, if he's discarded the one, Um, that would work. Uh, just because he discarded the one doesn't really mean that he doesn't want the three. Especially if you consider the three is two away, right? So one and two away from the one are a bit more dangerous with respect to the one. But it's also been a long time ago. So... If anything, a 1 and a 7 would have like this inverse argument of 1 for 7. 4 means 1 and 7 are safe, therefore 1 and 7 mean 4 is safe. But he hasn't discarded the 7, so he might be waiting on uh, 4 and 7. It is really, really, really uh, difficult to, to, to make a proper argument. Um, we are going to discard both anyway. You can also make the argument for the 5 too. Yes, and the 5 is more recent. But if you make the argument for the 5, then both 3 and 4 are dangerous, right? If you make the argument for the 5, then both 3 and 4 are dangerous. Whereas if you argument make the argument for the 1, then 1 and 2 are dangerous. And 4 is not. So you can't really make that argument for the 5. It's small margins, yes, exactly. But I really like you, the way you're thinking. You're, it's, it's, it's really good, the way you think. The 5-2, I'm so confused. That 5, and, particularly, and that 5. But that 5 more, particularly because that's more recent. Alright. Um, I'm just gonna discard the 3, knowing that I will probably um, discard the 4 anyway afterwards. Now, it's time for our South player. The South player has the opportunity to call the sequence 1, 2, 3, but he probably won't because then he doesn't have a pair. He really kind of hopes that this 2 becomes his pair. He wants 3, but it, it really doesn't get him any further, right? If he actually calls the 3, he still needs a pair and needs to discard something. It doesn't help him. So he's not gonna he's not gonna call it. The only thing it does it is it is that is he nails more parts of his hand into the side, uh, meaning he cannot change it anymore, right? And this player just de de declared reach, so he might want to keep his options uh, keep options on the table because he might want to play safe at some point. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Do I have a quick argument for something? No. Alright, so for that reason, he's not going to call that three. It doesn't bring him closer to Tempai. Uh, he can't take the F from the table. The F? You mean the, the green dragon? No one would, would need the green dragon, especially on him. The five. Ah. No. Because that's too late. Uh, first of all, sequences can only be called from the left. Right? So, the only way you can call a five is if this player would discard a five. But he's waiting for a five himself. He's not going to discard a five. Five from west would be from the right. You cannot call sequences from the right unless you're in tempo. You can declare win on a sequence from the right, but you cannot call a sequence from the right. Right? That's why we only really need to think about the sequences, and that's the good thing when it's our turn. So we have a bit of time. Right? When we think about sequences, we really only need to consider them when it's our turn, because that's when the person to our left has discarded. So do we want to build that into our sequence, or do we want to pick a, 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 a tile from the wall? And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to pick a tile from the wall. It's the Bamboo 7. Now. Does anyone see a problem? <laughs> Let's focus on the entire discard pile. Well, he does not see a problem. This South player does not see a problem. First of all, um, the 7 is not particularly dangerous on him. Um, the 7 is probably somewhat dangerous on him. Well, it is dangerous on him because it might be Tan Yao here. But if we remember, this guy is waiting for that piece, that 7, which we don't know. And he's laid the trap of this 4 to signify, ah, the 1 and the 7, they're safe. So he does not see that the 7 is actually dangerous. He might still want to play safe because that player is in reach. And therefore, um, because that player is in reach, and therefore he wants to delay until at least the Patsu is gone. But the Patsu is already gone because it's been called. Now, the way this looks, hmm, yes. The thing is, there's one more thing he can do if he senses the danger. There is no reason. I don't see a reason not uh, not to sack this the seven bamboo. There is there is one and only one, and that is there is another alternative, and the other alternative is this uh, one of characters, because this one of characters, just like this seven, does not do anything for his hand, and it is most likely safe on all three players. He has discarded it, so it's safe on him. He has discarded it, so it's safe on him. It's far away from anything he has discarded, and it looks like he's going for all simples. So, it's safe for him. Neither of these pieces bring him closer to Tempai, but he can at least hold on to the one, uh, to the seven, and discard the one for now. Depends how risky he wants to play it, but there is really no advantage in immediately playing that 7. So he might consider playing that 1. And that's why he's going to play that 1, even though in reality he might not want it. Yes, uh, 1 is a terminal, right? And uh, Tan Yao requires no terminals and arms. Alright, let's move on. This player picks the 7 of characters. We are in Senpai. But we are not in reach, so we're allowed to change our hand. So if we want to... Um, if we want to, we could give up and start playing safe. Let's see, is that 7 dangerous? Well, the 7 is next to the 8, but that was a long time ago. Right? That was 3 discards ago. You don't see the missing reach tile here, but there was a reach discard here. And that was three discards ago. So the seven is not super dangerous, other than that it is a simple tile. <sighs> uh, 
Uh, let me think. Let's consider, do we actually have a safe time? The answer is no. Well, is it no? Well, the answer is not no. We have this three. Now, we don't have any of the tiles in his discard, right? So, we don't have something that is immediately safe. However, um, uh, so, so we know that he can't, this player, uh, this player cannot win on any of these tiles. But he can also not win on any of the tiles that other players have discarded since uh, the Reach Declaration. In particular, this character 3. So his character 3 is also a safe tile, but it would get him out of tempo. It would mean uh, conceding. It would mean giving up, because there's really, not really a good way of coming back from that. So let's say, even though it's completely ludicrous, he's gonna keep fighting. He thinks the title of the stream might have been a lie, but I'm all over that. No, 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 no. It's gonna be a long stream. We are going to do something else after Mahjong. We, we are going to do that. Okay, so we're gonna continue to fight, and we're gonna to discard the seven, because the alternative of Discarding the three as a safe tile would mean breaking up the hand completely. Whereas discarding the one as an alternative here would mean to continue fighting. Yo, hey Jeffress, how are you doing? Rarely have I heard so many words and understood so little. This is the third instruction video, so um, it if it, um, I'm, I'm ha I will continue explaining, but we will continue to explain slightly advanced concepts currently. Uh, if you wanted to watch the YouTube videos or the um, the stream vods that we have already released uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday, um, then it would be a bit easier because then you'd have a full picture of everything. Anyway, welcome in. How are you doing? This is an Ashes four-hour stream. Yeah. Okay, so the seven. Yeah, I'm having great with them. Uh, the seven is there, and we are here, and it's the, uh... You might hear the words furry tan, but it doesn't actually mean furry tan. It's a kind of thing to know. It's confusing. Right. The player who is in reach is, uh, is, is, uh, it's his turn to draw. He picks the bamboo fly. Now he's waiting for three and six, so um, as we remember, so he can't do anything with the five, so he immediately discards it. Because his reach tile has been robbed, he now instead rotates this one. We're talking about biscuits, exactly, right? We still need, right? If we don't rotate this one, he's actually uh, his hand is dead. He needs to remember to do that, and other players will point it out because we need this indicator. Of, of the rotated tile. Alright, moving on. Beast player. What does he do? He sees the five. He can't do anything with the five. He picks another tile. On the wall. Ah! A six. Hmm. Now we were on a journey to discard this four. Actually, we are still on a journey to discard this four. This only increases our odds. It doesn't decrease them. This is really quite handy. So we discard the four. And nothing happens. Take a look at this player. He sees the four, he can't do anything with it, so he picks. He picks another seven. Aha! Now we're at a crossroads. We have another pair. Let's see. We can now make a decision. Several decisions, actually. We can make a decision to switch from this pair, uh, from this pair to this pair and keep this, and discard this, and we can make a decision to just play safe and lose everything, and sack the four switch. But you need... Uh, sack the four, or switch. Right. You need a reason to do that. And your reason cannot be, ah, but this player waits on the seven. Ah, but this player also needs a seven, right? Because he doesn't know that. Oh, the four was the last time. Okay, right. So, is there any reason?
actually, you might also consider... Right, we are still not in Tenpai. We are still in Ishanten, one away from Tenpai. So that means we will have to discard a total of two tiles and pick another two tiles. So we could also consider, because our hand is open anyway, right? To get rid of one of these sequences and call these as a triplet. Let's take a look. What are the outs? The character 2 has not been has been discarded once. It's in this player's hand. The bamboo 7 has not been discarded so far. So there's three outs in total. Which he can call from everywhere. Um, five and eight? Five has been discarded a lot. Eight has been discarded. Not good. Uh, but, but there's more outs here, right? There's eight in total, and five, five, eight discarded three times. So there are, out of eight possible, three are gone, so there's five left. Whereas here, there's only, uh, with the pairs, there's only three left. Let's take a look at the pins. Pin three and six. We really want to keep the pin, uh, um, this, because a pin three in our hand is a Dora, right? The, the Dora indicator is the two. So we really don't want to get rid of this. We might think about getting rid of this, but really, um, if we don't have safe tiles, we make our own safe tiles. So cutting a pair, if, if, if the first piece of that pair is safe, then the second piece of that pair is also safe. So we will definitely cut open a pair. The question is which pair? Let's take another look. This too has been discarded once. But if we cut a pair, then not for the reasoning of... Um, of wanting it to, to turn into a triplet, but for the reasoning of making safe tiles. So we have to find out how safe are those twos and sevens, and not how often have they been discarded yet. The one grown near the apple tree, always a good pair to cut. Very good. Okay, so we have the two and the seven. Let's take a look how dangerous are they. The bamboo seven... Now this is not the original reach discard, right? This is a Tsumogiri tile, so this does not give much information. Whereas the 2 gives more information at the 7. The 7, 2 and 8 give all the information you have on this player's hand. Which is... Maybe not something connected to the 7, maybe not something connected to this 2, or this 8. Now, the se uh, sorry. There's really nothing. Nothing that we can, can argue about this player's hand. For this player's hand, we don't even know if he's in Tempai. But there's this four, which highly indicates that the two is uh, that the seven is safe. There is this one, which indicates well, that's too far away, that's too long gone, and everything else is really pointless. Let's take a look at this player. For this player, he has discarded three and four, which means the two might be oh sorry, which means the two might be dangerous. So really, he will make the educated decision that the 7 is safe. Which is wrong, but he will make that decision. So he will discard the 7, hoping that it will create another safe tile. And at this point, and he'll die for it, indeed. At this point, hang on, let's, let's simulate this properly. Imagine not having perfect info. At this point, he discards it, this player over there shouts ROM, opens his hand, and puts the piece that was discarded next to his hand, or leaves it there. What he cannot, under any circumstance, do is build it into his hand. That is Shombo and costs you 10,000 points. You do not do that, because it is important what the tile was he was winning on, right? It is detrimental to know that this sequence was the one that is completed and that this sequence, in fact, 
was completed by a center tile and not uh, the six or the eight. And we'll go into why that is right away. So, let's see. Let's count what this player has. This is the complete hand. Let's separate it out a little, and this is open. Oh, let's put this here. All right, his winning condition. All right, you guys tell me. What, what do you know about this hand? What about the winning conditions, the multipliers, and if you want the mini points? Green Dragon Triplet, Dora. Exactly. Green Dragon Triplet is 100. And yeah, Dora, the, uh, the pin 3, 100. He has Domo or whatever. He has a Dora, yes. So he has 200. So two multipliers. Now, what about the mini points? Let's go through this funky list. Oh, that's in, that's in German. Uh, do I have that list in English somewhere? No. Okay. So... Here's the Dolmo Pasta Sauce. Um, we start going through the list of things that bring mini points. First of all, a completed hand, unless it's the seven pairs, starts with 20 points. <sighs> Winning on a discard, which is what happened here, with a closed hand is another 10 points. But he didn't have a closed hand, so he doesn't get those 10 points. If the pair, which he has here, consists of dragons or seat or round winds, he gets another two points. Not the case, the pair is simple. Then triplets uh, and quadruplets give points. A open triplet of terminals and honors give four points. So there's another four points right there. So we're up to 24. We add the, uh, the points of the weight. If you are waiting for a single piece... Hmm. Let's, let's do this the other way around. If you are waiting... If, if, if the waiting tile that completes your hand is a two-way completing a sequence like this, then it's no points. In all other cases, it's two points. So in this case, it's, an, it's a closed weight because six and seven are closed with, uh, six and eight are closed with the seven in the middle. That's a closed weight, two more points. From 22, uh, from 20 to 24 to 26, 26 points. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, win by self-pick, adds another two, didn't happen, and seven pairs also didn't happen. So, we have a total of 26 mini points, and 26, uh, and, that's the base mini points that always gets rounded up to the next tenor. So, 30. So, we have a 230 hand. 200, 30 food. Two multipliers, 30 mini points. And now. We check this beautiful, easy to read table to see how many points we get. He is not the dealer, because uh, he is west and we are east. East is the dealer. So he is a non-dealer. He has two Han. Uh, and 30 Fu. And then we have Ron and Sumo. It was a Ron, so we take the upper value of the table. It's 2,000. So this player has to pay 2,000 points to this player. So he would open his drawer, take out two of these funky sticks, and pass them to him. Additionally, this player de declared reach, but didn't win, so this reachibon also goes over there to this player. So he gains a total of 3,000 points. I'm not gonna go into base point calculation, we can do that uh, next.